Yo, yo, yes sir, man, we live and we back. Welcome, welcome back to the Golden Goose DFS show. I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose, here today bringing you another edition of my starting five for DraftKings and FanDuel, all right? But before we get into it, y'all already know we got the lineup review where I go over all the previous slate starting five that I post on Twitter, just seeing how we did and how and why I chose the plays I chose, all right? So we're going to get right into that for y'all. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn your notification bell on so you can be here rocking with us every day when the video drops. All right. First up, just a quick uh, a quick peek back. If you saw yesterday's episode, you know I shot the episode a little early so we didn't see the end of my lineup. And because I had someone asking in the comments, I'll just show y'all a quick. This is from the, um, the two days ago. Uh, the Zubak lineup that went over early, he gave me 29 and 1%. We did cash in here, came in 205th place, uh, 180 bucks over here. It was $12 single entry, I think, I believe. But, um, yeah, uh, Zubak, just a quick showing of that so y'all see how we place in that. 281 ended up being the final score, all right? Now, last night, oh, my goodness, it was a rough one for us here, man. You can see right now. You can see the snowman. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Little unlucky yesterday. We'll see. Let's get into it, man. If you caught the updated starting five, you know I went with DeJounte Murray, Jordan Poole, R.J. Barrett, Christos Porzingis, and Darius Baisley. All right? Let's get the bad out the way first. Let's start down here with Baisley and Porzingis. Porzingis, I'm okay with. Questionable injury. He only played 20 minutes. You get, that happens sometimes. We got him at eleven percent. I thought he was a, a a nice value at this power forward spot, in a great spot against Houston, a team who lacks defense. He coming off a game where he played well. I thought he could continue the momentum and at seventy six hundred. I thought he was a, a nice value at the power forward spot. Like I said, injury didn't quite work in our favor. You can't do anything about that. Injuries happen. I'm okay with that. It happens, all right? Now, Darius Bagley, this is what I'm not okay with. I have no earthly idea why he only played 20 minutes in a close game against the Golden State Warriors. We got him at 15%. He was at 5K. I felt like he was just too cheap for a role that I thought he would have, seeing 30-plus minutes and getting up double-digit shot attempts. I thought he was a double-double, had double-double potential in his matchup, but I had to go back and look at it and see. I don't know why he only played 20 minutes, but... That's that's not going to get it done, man. He only gave us 17, well, right at 18 DK points at 15% ownership. I tried to get different yesterday around, the, you know, just the small forwards, shooting guard, things like that, because I knew I wanted Westbrook. I knew I wanted DeJounte Murray, and I knew those guys were going to be chalk. So I felt like small forward, shooting guard, spots you can get different at, which brings me to my small forward play, R.J. Barrett, who laid a dub for me. I wanted to go R.J. Barrett, just a pivot from guys like – so the small forward was all over the place yesterday, right? You had you had the Lakers news, so you didn't know if it was going to be Baysmore, Monk, uh, or Carmelo Anthony. People was going to Wiggins, so I was like – Man, this small forward position is all over the place. So I took my chance on a lower own guy who I knew was locked in for 30 plus minutes, who had the potential to give us a nice game. And I like this price at 5,600. He got off to a very hot start, but he fills it out. I think he gave, he gave us 13 DK points in the first quarter and then did absolutely nothing, man. But that's to be expected when guys like Kimber Walker finally get hot and have a good fantasy game. It's going to take away from the other guys. So. Uh, Kimba had a good game. Fournier had a decent game. So that just pulled usage and shots away from R.J. Barrett. So he let us down in this spot. I'm okay with it. Had him at 10% on. Was just trying to get different because I knew I was going to be chalky with Murray Westbrook. And, and I knew I was going to get AD in some spots. I knew those guys were going to be super chalky. So you had to get different somewhere. Try to get different with R.J. Barrett. Didn't quite work out in my favor. Shooting guard Jordan Poole, that was just a, a pivot from Andrew Wiggins for me. Like, Andrew Wiggins was drawing a lot of ownership. I don't – I mean, he, he ended up coming through, but it's Wiggins. I'm not playing Andrew Wiggins. So, since he was going that, – that was a nice game environment on the fast slate. The Warriors, OKC, okay, so they've done. So, since a lot of people were going Wiggins, I just went Jordan Poole as, like, my direct pivot. As, uh, Poole was just $100 more. 
Uh, didn't quite work out for us. Got Jordan Poole at 16% on here. He gave us right at 27 DK points. Uh, solid, but just not enough on yesterday's slate, man. Is uh, All the chalk just went bananas, you know. A lot of people stacked ADA and Westbrook. I was trying to keep from going that route, but <laughs> I probably should have went that route because those guys just killed the slate. All of them seven, right at 70 points yesterday. So I had two of them, just need the third piece. Which brings me to my crown jewel. The best play I had on y'all side, DeJounte Murray. Came in at chalk. This is the uh, Twitter off single entry too, by the way. Uh, I think so. Let me make sure. I ain't tell y'all the content. Yeah, yeah, the 35K pick and roll, Twitter off single entry. Um, yeah, no cash over here. But DeJounte Murray. My crown jewel yesterday, I was locked in on him all day. I didn't even care what the ownership was going to be. Got him right at 42% on. Should have been higher, in my opinion. He blessed him with a triple-double, man. Like I told you, if you saw yesterday's video, I told you he had triple-double potential every slate, man. People sleep on DeJounte Murray and his triple-double upside every game. So I wanted to get to him at 7,300. He paid his off for us, 71 DK points. I ain't my best play on yesterday. Finish out the lineup. Like I said, I did that starting five because I wanted to be different up in the shooting guard small forward area. And I, let, I wanted uh, enough salary to pay for Westbrook. And I went AD in some spots as well. So, But this single inch, I went Westbrook, got him at right at 51% on. A 64 uh, DK points from Wessel Westbrook. Nice outing from him, but it didn't move the needle because he was so chalky. And then uh, finishing that lineup, I went Keldon Johnson. He another guy who was chalky, 47%. Just trying to get pieces of that game, man. So it was a five-game slate. It's not many ways you can go. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to have to get to some of the chalk. You just got to deem which ones you feel necessary to have. I thought Keldon Johnson could have been a vital piece, but uh, he let us down here. 19 DK points really hurt us. And then the my utility spot, Malik Munger. It was just a result of salary. I have I had forty one hundred left after I was feeling real comfortable right here. I had forty one hundred left. I got the news Monk was starting. I was like, hey, give me another piece of that game. You know, it it it, it was the best game on the slate from a fantasy perspective and just scoring wise in general. So Malik Monk got him at thirty four percent on right at twenty seven DK points. Very solid effort from him. Monk. Like I said, last night was a rough one, man. No cash over here. First time in a while, we ain't cash nothing. But, hey, injuries, many limitations, not much you can do about it. Let's move on to tomorrow, and let's get back to the money, all right? Coming in on DK tomorrow. Now, the theme for me today across both sites, I'm just taking advantage of the mispriced guys. I think there's a lot of mispriced guys on both sites tomorrow, and that's what I aim to do uh, right now before any news comes. And, yes, I do think Anthony Davis sits today, all right? Just FYI, because they, they made him questionable immediately after the game. I really think Anthony Davis sits out, but I got to see if are they going to rest LeBron again too. They probably bring LeBron back. I don't know, so I, I, I didn't address that situation on my starting five. I got just, I'm just going to wait for that news to see, but I do think Anthony Davis sits. So we just got to wait and see what the starting lineup going to be, if LeBron plays, things of that nature. I tell you what, though, if LeBron plays – I probably won't go Westbrook on DraftKings because I don't think Westbrook has the same upside as he did with him and Anthony Davis as he does with LeBron because LeBron is going to want to handle the ball more. So it's going to take the ball more out of Russell's hands, whereas with AD, he was the main ball handler. So we just have to see how that news goes. But let's get into the starting five. At point guard at the top, SGA. Shea gives Alexander. I know it's rough. He's been up and down so far, but the fact remains he is just too cheap. This is a price and error on DK. 7100 for his role. For, he is the guy for this team, man. He does everything. Most of the ball handling duties, all of the above. He is this team's superstar. Whether you think he's a superstar in real life or not, he's a superstar for the OK City Thunder. So he gets what he wants when he wants. Going against this game against the Lakers, who have been lackluster on defense this year. I like SGA, especially this 7100 price tag. Just one of those mis mispriced guys I just spoke about. All right? Love getting the SGA. Coming in at shooting guard, another mispriced guy in my opinion. Jalen Brown going against the Washington Wizards. I don't know why his price has dropped to 7800 He's been very solid to start the year. Had one down game, but other than that, he's been giving you monster performances. As you can see right here by his fantasy average so far, he's averaging 47. Going against the Washington Wizards should be a little up pace matchup for him. He does everything, man. He's the type of player I like. Steals, blocks, rebounds, assists. 
if he brings his scoring, that's when you get the the seventy points like he had against the Knicks. If he if his offensive game is going, man, you you pretty much always gonna get a big one for Jalen Brown because he's gonna fill up the stat sheet everywhere else. And I think he's mispriced tomorrow at seventy eight hundred in his matchup against the Wizards. Some blowout concern, but I'm not too worried. The Wizards are very scrappy. If they do get blowed out, it'd be towards the end, man. It should be enough for most most of the game. I like getting a Jalen Brown this seventy eight hundred price tag. Coming in at small four. Another guy that's still mispriced. I'm going to go Desmond Bain. 4800 A little cheaper than Melton over here. So that's why I want to go down to uh, Bain. Save a little Saturday. But he's been playing 30-plus minutes and been very solid. You can see his fans there. He averaging 33 uh, DK points so far through the season. At 4800 man, that's well over 6X. That's just too cheap right now. He's another mispriced guy. In the, probably the best matchup uh Fantasy wise on the slate tomorrow. Memphis Portland, that should be a great game. The highest total on the slate should be back and forth. Should be a, finally be a close contested game for the Trailblazers because they've been in a lot of blowouts this year, whether they was doing a blowing out or getting blowed out. So guys haven't seen full run. I think you can. I like guys on that Portland side as you see by my center play. But Desmond Bain, like him at 4,800. Coming in at power four, I want to look at John Collins in this matchup against the Pelicans. He's a physical power forward, likes to get on the block, play with his back to the basket. And if he sees Brandon Ingram defense, he could absolutely destroy Brandon Ingram on the block. Ingram doesn't have enough size, enough weight. He could just put him in the basket, man. I like this matchup against the Pelicans. Should be a fast-paced game as well. I think he's just too cheap at 6,300. Talking about a guy with 40-point upside, double-double potential every time he steps on the court. I definitely want to take a shot on John Collins tomorrow in this matchup. Another guy I think that is mispriced. And coming in at center. I want to look at you, Seth Nurkic, man. I, you definitely want pieces of this Memphis-Portland game. I think Nurkic is the way to go, too. He's going to be overlooked tomorrow, man. Coming in against this Memphis Grizzly team. Like I said, the Portland Trailblazers have been in a lot of blowouts this year. So, that's why you got Dame, who only saw 30-plus minutes in one game. Nurk is pretty similar. They haven't seen a full allotment of run in any matchup because of the blowout. Here in this matchup against the Memphis Grizzlies, Tightly contested game. The overs 234, man. Highest total on the slate. I think you can see 30 plus minutes from Nurkic. 30 plus minutes from Yusef Nurkic, man, at 6,900. You, you know Nurkic got 50 point potential, man. He could really dominate down low. In his matchup, I expect Steven Adams to get some more run on the other side. He's a solid defender, but I'm not too worried about him, man. Nurkic is a skilled offensive big, man. I think he can have a big double-double for us in this matchup. And let's not forget, we didn't see Nurkic. You know his ceiling type before You didn't see Nurkic give you 70-plus fantasy points before. I just think he's mispriced at his 6,900 just because he hasn't been seeing the full minutes load this year. But... I think he I think that changes in this game. You can see him for thirty three minutes, maybe even a little more, depends on how he's going, man. I like Yusef Nurkis at the six nine hundred price tag. There you have it, man. My starting five on DraftKings, Shea Gidders Alexander, Jalen Brown, Desmond Bain, John Collins, and Yusef Nurkic. All right? Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pool. You know I'm gonna have them in mind, all right? Let's go take a look at FanDuel, see what I'm liking over there. Coming in on FanDuel at the top, man. Miss Price, Dame Lilla, eighty two hundred. They, man, you going listen, man. I'm a, I will be a hundred percent Dame Lilla on Fanduel. I do not care what his ownership is. I do not care. Eighty two hundred is criminal for Dame Lilla, man. That is, cr- I, like I said, he hasn't had a big performance this game. One that's due to the first game C.J. McCollum just showed out he didn't shoot well. And every game since then, he hasn't failed to see 30 minutes because of the blowout. Expecting this game to be close. Dame Lillard, full run, 8,200, man. You got to be crazy to not play Dame Lillard tomorrow. I don't know I don't know how to get away from him. Like, he's uh, he's locked on FanDuel. I don't even care what news come out. He, he better broke his leg or something. Give me Dame Lillard at 8,200. Enough said. Coming in at shooting guard. Give me Russell Westbrook. Listen, I don't like it over on FanDuel because he's more uh his price a little higher, but eighty four hundred and I'm anticipating Anthony Davis being out. Come on. Even though LeBron's gonna see majority of the ball handling duties, man, eighty four hundred is downright criminal for Russell Westbrook. He can destroy this price tag. Right? It just fit like oh my. 
I can't. 8,400, get you some Russell Westbrook as well on, on the fan duel tomorrow. I don't care. Coming in at small four, a little salary saver, Jay Crowder. Just too cheap. Another mispriced guy. I'm telling you, that's the theme for the day. There's so many mispriced guys tomorrow, man. I just want to take advantage of all of them. 3,900 Jay Crowder. Going against the Sacramento Kings, another fast-paced team. He's going to see 30-plus minutes. Jay Crowder's another guy who does a little bit of everything. Assists, rebounds, steals, a little block or two here and there. If he brings his offensive game, now you're talking about a real upside. If that three ball is falling for him, he can really return you a nice uh, – he can really give you a nice return on the 3900 price tag. Get you some Jay Crowder on FanDuel. Coming in at Power Forward. Staying with my boy John Collins, man. 6400 this think he's too cheap. I love this matchup against the Pelicans. Double-double potential for John Collins. Hope he can get that three ball going today, man, and really give us a nice offensive output. But I like John Collins at 6,400. And rounding out at center, man, I want to look back to my boy Ivaka Zubox. 4,500. I played him last time. I did, the spots you want to look at Zubox is when the other team has bigger centers. I told you that's why we took him the other night. When they have bigger centers, they're going to get a lot of run, like Cleveland has in Jared Allen, who's going to see 30-plus minutes, barring foul trouble or anything. Zubak pretty much is locked in for more run in, in that situation because he's really the only big the Clippers have right now. So if he if he's not out there, they have the potential to get destroyed on the boards, especially by Jared Allen. So I'm expecting Zubak to see increased run, and he can give us a nice return at this 4,500, just like he did the other night. I have no problem going right back to Zubak in this matchup. All right. There you have it, man. My starting five on FanDuel: Dame Lillard, Russell Westbrook, Jay Crowder, John Collins, Ivaka Zubak. All right, man. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pool. You already know they in mind. That's going to do it for us here today. Y'all know the motto, man. Chances make champions. Y'all green up. I'll see y'all tomorrow, all right? Let's go.